By the end of this video, I'll make you a credit card expert. In the past two years, I have used 30 different types of credit cards myself and I also worked for payment companies, a cybersecurity company which gives me some credibility to talk about finances. Other than that, for the last one week, I did a lot of research reading credit card related articles, watched multiple credit card related videos on YouTube, read the fine print on the credit card kits, reviewed credit card bills to put together this video and found fascinating things about credit cards. By the way, I'll not only make you a credit card expert, but I will also give you two secrets that nobody will tell you about credit cards. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tarun Josh, a UI UX designer without a fancy degree, but with a diverse background across 20 different industries. On this channel, I dive deep into topics like design, self-improvement and lifestyle. Remember, our goal is to make you a credit card expert in next 20 minutes. While I will keep my promise, recommending any credit cards is out of scope for this video. Without a further ado, let's dive into the topic. Do you know? There are 5.8 billion credit cards in circulation in 2023. 625 billion credit card transactions happened within 2022 alone. And for the banks, credit cards are the significant percentage of their business. That is why you get so many calls selling your credit cards. Credit cards, those tiny plastic rectangles that reside in our wallet, have become an integral part of our modern financial transactions. Have you ever wondered how credit cards came into be? There is a fascinating history that traces back to 1949 when cash was prominent method to transact between people. The story of credit card begins with an American businessman called Frank X. McNamara. One day he was dining at a New York City restaurant. He ordered a delicious meal, finished eating and he asked for a bill. And when the bill arrived, McNamara realized he left his wallet at home. This put him in an embarrassing situation, leading him to later envision a system that would allow people to make purchases without using cash. McNamara went on to co-found Diners Club International in 1950, introducing the world to first widely accepted credit card. Frank's idea was to create a single card that could be used at various establishments. He along with his attorney Ralph Snyder, devised a plan to issue a card that could be used for travel, dining and entertainment expenses. They signed off various restaurants and hotels to accept this card and it allowed customers to charge their bills to a centralized account. This concept revolutionized the way people pay for services, introducing the concept of credit card. By allowing people to access the credit and making purchases even if they didn't have cash on hand, they democratized access to various services and goods. Frank's idea was great, but the next Next stepping stone made credit cards viral. In the late 1950s, Bank of America was looking for ways to expand its consumer banking business and reach a broader consumer base. In 1958, Bank of America introduced the Bank America card, a credit card that was not tied to a specific merchant or a region. It was a multi-purpose card, designed to be accepted at various establishments, offering credit card holders the flexibility to use it for everyday expenses. But the key for this vitality was the Bank of America's audacious marketing strategy. In order to increase adaption of this card, the bank identified potential customers based on income and other criteria and sent them a credit card without a request or application. The recipients were surprised to find shiny new piece of plastic in their mailboxes. They mailed out credit cards to thousands of households accompanied by a letter that explained how to activate the card and use it. The marketing pitch emphasized the convenience of the Bank of America's credit card and how it could replace cash and checks for various transactions. The success of Bank of America's credit card inspired other banks to enter the credit card market. This expansion transformed the credit cards from a novel concept into a mainstream financial tool. Responsible card usage can help build and maintain good credit score. Let me give you a quick understanding of credit score before we dive into the amazing benefits of owning a credit card and top two secrets of the credit card nobody will tell you. Remember, our goal is to make your credit card expert in next 10 minutes. Before that, we need to understand the concept of credit score. Credit score is your financial report card that is visible to all financial institutions. To label it better, let's break down the concept of credit score with a simple example. Let us say you wanted to buy a car. You don't have enough money saved up to pay for the car in full. So you are considering to take out an auto loan from a bank. When you go to the bank to apply for an auto loan, the loan officer checks your credit score. If your credit score is between 750 and 850, that means you have a good credit score. This can be achieved by paying bills on time, avoiding maxing out your credit cards, using up to maximum of 70% credit limit, by operating an account for a long time and not taking multiple cards or loans in a short period of time. But if you do the opposite, 
then it will return in lower credit score. If you have a higher score, banks will believe that you will pay your EMIs on time and also offer lower interest rate. But if you have a lower score, banks might not even offer you a loan and even if they offer, they will charge you a higher interest rate. It's always a good practice to pay off your debts as you use it. But why do credit cards have such wide adoption? That is because it is marketed with amazing benefits. Many credit cards offer a unique benefit known as 50-day interest-free credit period. Let's break down how this works with an example. Suppose you have a credit card with 50-day interest-free credit period and your billing cycle runs from the first of each month to 30th of each month. Any purchases made within this billing cycle will be due for payment on 20th of the following month. Let us say you have credit limit of 5000. This is similar to the account balance. That means the maximum you can spend using this card is $5,000. This limit is different for every individual and banks decided based on multiple parameters like income and credit score etc. For example, on July 5th you make a purchase of $1000 using credit card to buy a new laptop. The purchase falls within your July's billing cycle which runs from July 1st to July 30th. Around the end of July, let's say July 31st, you receive your credit card statement which includes the $1000 laptop purchase. The payment due date mentioned on your statement is typically around the 20th of August. Because you have made the purchase within the billing cycle and your due date is August, you have approximately 50 days from July 5th to August 20th to make the payment without incurring any interest charges. If you pay the $1000 in full by August 28th, you won't have to pay interest on this purchase. It's essentially an interest free loan for up to 50 days. Let's say you don't want to pay that amount in full. That's when you can convert that into an EMI. Credit card EMIs are a financial tool that allows cardholders to convert certain high value purchases into manageable monthly installments, often at the lower interest rates than the regular credit card rates. Here is how it works. Let's again take the example of the laptop. Instead of paying the entire amount upfront, you choose to convert the purchases into 12-month EMI plan offered by the credit card issuer. You request your credit card issuer to convert the $1000 laptop purchase into 12-month EMI plan. The issuer may offer you a lower interest rate for EMI plan compared to the standard credit card interest rate. Let's assume they offer a 12% annual interest rate for the EMI with a 12-month EMI plan. You will pay 1000 divided by 12 which is approximately 83.33 dollars per month for an year. You will also pay interest on the outstanding EMI amount. In this case, the interest is calculated based on the reducing balance. So, as you pay each installment, the interest decreases. Over the 12 months, the total interest might be for example $120. The total cost of the smartphone including the interest charges would be 1000 the principal plus interest $120 is equal to $1120. Credit card EMIs makes it easier to afford expensive purchases by spreading the cost over several months. However, it's essential to understand the terms and interest rates associated with EMI plans as they can vary between credit card issuer and may impact overall cost. Credit cards also give opportunities to earn rewards and cashback benefits on your spending. These perks not only makes your purchases more satisfying but also add value to your financial life. Many credit cards offer travel rewards allowing you to earn points or miles for every dollar spent. These rewards can be redeemed for flights, hotel stays, or travel vouchers, making your vacations more affordable. Cashback credit cards offer a percentage of your spending back to you as cash rewards. It's like getting a discount every purchase you make and the cashback can add up significantly over the time. Some credit cards partner with specific retailers to offer exclusive discounts and promotions. These can range from discounts on clothing, electronics, dining, and entertainment offers, etc. Premium credit cards often come with exclusive membership perks such as access to airport launches, concierge services, etc. And few come with joining bonuses as they give thousands of points up front including cash benefits and points which can be redeemed at different locations. But if credit cards have such amazing benefits, why many people say credit cards are bad for you? This is where the fine print I read helped me gain interesting insights. By the way, congratulations, in the next 5 minutes, you'll become a credit card expert. While credit cards offer numerous benefits, they also come with certain disadvantages that you should be aware of to use them responsibly. Here are some of the key disadvantages of credit cards. Credit cards typically have high interest rates. 
especially if you carry a credit balance from one month to another without paying your bills. The interest charges can accumulate quickly, making purchases more expensive over time. Easy access to credit can lead to overspending and debt accumulation. Cardholders may tend to make purchases they can't afford, leading to financial stress and long-term debt. Credit cards can come with various fees such as annual fees, late fees, overtime fees, and cash advance fees, something, something, so many things. These fees can add up and increase the cost of using the credit card. Misusing credit card, missing payments, or carrying high balances can negatively impact your credit score. A lower credit score can affect further borrowing and lending opportunities, like I said before. When you get your credit card bill, you'll often see that there is only some minimum payment each month you need to pay. That is a small percentage of your outstanding balance. While this provides short-term relief, it can lead to long-term debt if you make minimum payments. Credit cards make it easy to make impulse purchases as there is no immediate out-of-pocket cost. This can lead to overspending where not planned or budgeted for. Credit card information can be stolen or it can be compromised leading to fraudulent charges. Some credit cards offer attractive introductory offers such as 0% APR for first few months. However, you may be enticed to overspend during the period and struggle to pay off balances when the regular interest kicks in. Credit cards can be used for cash advances which can be particularly problematic if you use them for gambling and other high risk activities don't do that. There was a time when because of my irresponsible usage of credit cards, I was swamped in credit card debt. After realizing how I was overspending and losing the money, I made my mission to pay off every penny of my credit card loans. As I did not want to lose the benefits of credit card and also to avoid falling into the same trap again, here is what I do now. I spend everything on my credit card but only till the limit of the amount I have in my actual bank account. When I do a transaction, I pay off the amount I used immediately. Or sometimes, I overpay on top of my available credit limit and use the overpaid amount to do the transactions. Now you know everything about credit cards and how to use them responsibly. Because my audience is global, I'm not going to recommend any cards. Do your research, compare and apply for a credit card through a bank based on your needs. After receiving the credit card, keep credit card, credit card number, PIN and OTPs always secure and do not share it with anyone. So here are two other secrets of credit cards nobody will tell you. Your card comes with an insurance that covers many unexpected situations. The most close to me are purchase protection and extended warranty. Because when you buy any electronics, example laptop, mobile, etc. Using the credit card, and it gets stolen or lost, your car credit card will cover the loss for you based on the value of the goods. Or let us say you bought a product and that got damaged after the warranty expires, the insurance will cover it for you. Other than that, there is also travel insurance with trip cancellation or interruption, theft insurance, travel accident, and medical insurance. The other best benefit is scam protection. If you ever bought a product or service with your credit card and got scammed, you can call your credit card company and raise dispute. Then the credit card company will raise a charge back to the merchant and your money will be refunded by the merchant or the credit card company. This way, your money is always secured. All these benefits make me mindlessly use credit card as my first option to do any kind of financial transaction. Saying that, it is also important to realize that the temptation to use unavailable money is also very high which will eventually make you poorer than the actual benefits. Don't fall into the trap of offers provided by the credit card companies and do not try to run behind reaching the spend targets to get the points. They will always try to make you overspend so that the banks and credit card companies will make money. With the knowledge in this video, now you know how to save money, use the credit card the right way to make the best out of them. So make sure you always spend only money you have and always pay off the debt immediately. Want to learn about finances? Check out my financial education playlist here or here somewhere. Like I said at the start, you just became a credit card expert. Because I kept my promise, click on the subscribe button and comment what are your thoughts on credit cards and on this video. And also comment what did I miss. Thank you very much for watching. This is Tan Josh signing off. See you with another video next time.